Set your face, not your hair. Redeeming the Time Brothers podcast, a podcast by Gene Kissinger and Norman Kissinger, two brothers who have spent their lives in ministry and raising large families. Our desire is to provide a digital place for those who long to belong. We are developing discipleship tools, spreading them across multiple platforms to bring about a rapture-ready body of believers so that when Jesus Christ comes back, he will have no trouble recognizing his own children. Tonight, we want to leave a nightlight on for you. That nightlight is out of Luke chapter 9, starting in verse 51 down through verse 56. And it came to pass, when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. He sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him, because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirits ye are of, for the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about setting your face. Uh, <laughs> when I got married, uh, I, I came from all boys. There was, there was only boys in my family. My mom had four sons. My dad only had brothers. There were three brothers. My mom only had brothers. There were no other girls besides her. And I think there was eight in her family. And it was long on guys. And so when I got married, I was in for the biggest culture shock of my life. I had no idea what I was getting into. We went to the bathroom and there's this, uh, looks like a pair of tongs, but it's got, uh, it's got kind of a plier in on it. I had no idea what it was, man. But I, I just was totally baffled. I looked at it. I thought about it. I didn't know. I went to my wife. I said, what in the world is this? And she said, it's something that they use to curl their eyelashes. <laughs> Girls, are, oh, guys just don't have nothing like that. We had no, no way. Then when, that, when we first got married, my wife went to her first Mary Kay party and came back. And we lived in an apartment that cost like $185 for an entire month to rent the apartment. And, and that I think that even included utilities, like 185 bucks for the whole thing for a month. She comes in with a bag of $60 bag of Mary Kay, and she's got a little bitty bag, smaller than a bag you'd bring, like a doggy bag you'd bring home from a restaurant. I went out to the back of the bug because I was looking for a back seat full of bags, of grocery bags full, <laughs> full of makeup, but that's not how it works with women. That $60 was represented in that little deal. That was half a month's rent, man. I thought, boy, I don't know if I can afford to be married. But women, women talk about, in that day, they talked about setting their hair and putting on their face, and <laughs> doing their face, uh, and setting their hair meant that they curled their hair, and then putting on their face, or doing their face meant that they were putting on their makeup, and again, those those phrases just were uh, like another language to me, I didn't understand what that was, how, how do you put on your face, what are you talking about, what are you, is setting your hair, What what is that, and but Jesus here talks about setting his face towards Jerusalem, what it means is, in this instance, it's far different than what the ladies were doing. What he was doing is he had a he had a purpose. He had a plan. And that purpose and the plan was so passionate in him that it showed on his face. See, anybody that was looking at him could see that he was going somewhere. He had a purpose and an intention, and that intentionality was manifest in his face. And so they could see that he was headed to Jerusalem. But see, Jesus... There's a firmness that's there when we talk about the, the setting of your face to something. There's an idea of firmness. In another passage, it talks about he set his face like flint, hard to, to go to Jerusalem. He, he was headed there, and it was, it was locked onto it like a guided missile. And uh, there's, there, there's so much that's here, but what I want you to draw from this, what you can apply for it in your life is this. Jesus was set to go to Jerusalem because that was his mission. He didn't come to destroy men's lives, this passage says, but to save men's lives. And, and he was the lamb slain from before the foundation of the world. The cross wasn't an afterthought for God. It wasn't like, oh, I got an idea. Why don't I just sort of make the most out of this bad situation? No, the cross was the purpose of God. It was the heart of God to bring about the redemption of humanity by Jesus living a sinless and perfect life and then dying on the cross because you owed a debt you couldn't pay. He paid a debt he didn't owe. And he paid with his own life on that cross so that you and I could have access 
to God and go to heaven by being born again. What an awesome God he is. But that's why he had his face set. He, he was locked on to it. He, he was on purpose. He was intentional. Here's the application for you and I. If you're a believer, if you're a believer in 2021, you and I are headed into the end times. And I got to tell you, you're not going to make it to what God's purpose is unless you can learn to set your face like flint on God and what God wants for your life. You, you've got to decide that God is the most important thing for you. The kingdom of God is paramount and that everything else falls by the wayside. Everything else is peripheral. It's, it's in the, your side vision, but you're, you're locked on to the will of God. And when you set your face like flint for that, you're going to have enough determination to be able to make it. But if you just set your hair, what happens when you go outside and it rains? It just kind of flops down. Any adverse circumstances will, will knock it out of kilter. The wind will blow it, and, and it's not going to work right. But his face was set like flint to, to go to Jerusalem and to be a sacrifice for us. We need to set our face like flint to be able to accomplish God's purposes in these last days, to be, be last days Daniel's, last days Joseph's, last days Paul's, last day disciples who are, have our face set like flint to do God's will, even when it's hard. Even when the circumstances are difficult, we set our face like flint. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for these dear ones under the sound of my voice. I pray that you'd be with them. I pray that you'd give them strength as they go through their days. Help them, God, to be locked on to your kingdom purposes in their life. Lord, you have got a plan for them. They were not born into your kingdom just so that they could ride a couch to heaven or even ride a church pew to heaven. They were put into this kingdom so that they could reach the lost and, and make disciples and and grow churches and, and ready a body of believers for the second coming. And we need to be about that business. Help us to set our face like flint to it. Thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you. You have a great night. I love you, but more importantly, Jesus loves you.